Hey guys, so happy to have you on the Enneagram and Marriage podcast for this extra special midweek episode where we are getting to type Marvel characters with my daughter, Melody. Melody loves her Marvel, as do many people out there. We had a Marvel request episode, and I have been in the throes of it with my clients and couples all week. So this is a joy to just get to do an episode that is lighter and fun and will not make or break any of your family legacies. In fact, I hope that you can actually learn a Along with me. Sometimes I love to learn along with certain tropes on movies that will in books that will remain nameless, as you already know very well. Uh, if you've ever heard the show before, who I'm talking about, but I definitely can expand myself and head out into Marvel. And for those who heard, our Halloween family gear this week is office related, uh, so I do get a little more expansive than just Jane Austen or Tolkien. Um, and today I'm doing that with my dear daughter, who is also doing that with her dad and brother and sister, because Marvel is a place where everybody can meet and enjoy. May not be our first pick, but each of us is like, ooh, this is fun. And so we get to type characters with her today. We're going to hopefully find every single type represented. You'll also hear us doing a bit of our tri-type theorizing. And this just means we're nuancing even farther. It doesn't mean that any of these characters is actually this type because we can't get inside of them, but it means that we're looking a little deeper to say, okay, this one is not just a plain six. They also have some eight in there. They also may have some two. So if you hear us doing those three digits, know that we're just like, fine tuning these characters, but you can have fun along with us, argue with us banter. We see this all the time on our uh, fun posts we do about this. And I am so glad you are here for it all with us. I hope you have such a safe, happy, healthy, fun Halloween week. And also we are so grateful to uh, just be sharing our fun contests over at Instagram. So keep up with us over there and at SuppersLoose.com where we actually sell mystery dinner games, not just at Halloween, but all year long. We have hilarious Christmas games and New Year's games too. So we have just had fun this week sharing and merging our worlds, actually, because this is that week where we're like, ooh, we have games that are really fun for couples and we can share them during Halloween week. But I'll do that a couple other times this year, too. But really today, I want to remind you before we get started that we've been on the book tour, as you know, too. So I just want to give a couple shouts out to some shows that I've already been with or recorded with. And I just want to say thank you to them. Melody's going to do that just a tiny bit when she comes on too. Uh, and hopefully by the end of our, our first few months of launching here, we'll make sure everybody gets recognized. But please know that I see and hear and I'm so delighted to just come across people who are sharing that their uh, reading is meaningful. Yesterday, I had Sarah Billups share that she and her husband's four or five relationship was really seen. And then today, Haley from Salt and Light Enneagram shared that her uh, five nine relationship made her cry when she read it. And then she made me cry. And I'm like, I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> I don't even cry that easily. So I'm just grateful. I'm really grateful. I want to thank Channel Mom Syndicated Show, a nationally syndicated radio show, for having me uh, twice on her show. And she even played the Taylor Swift song from inside the book to just reiterate with everybody like how we can see colors with different people. And I love when people bring music together. There's a lot of songs referenced in my book as well so that you can put on uh, as you're listening through these songs. Uh, some of them playful, but all of them meaningful. Um, yeah, I was so glad when she just pulled that onto the show with uh, with me the other day. Um, also thanking uh, Justin and Trisha Davis for having me on their Let's Get Real podcast, which you know I love that title. Um, Get Your Marriage On was such a fun podcast to be on with Dan. And also Pop Top TV, Cornerstone TV, uh, Enneagram in Real Life with Steph Baron Hall, that episode's upcoming but recorded. And Melody will share a few more and there's even more. I'm so grateful and we will continue sharing. So if you have good places for us to share, make sure you tell us. But I'm just happy that we've been able to spread the Ennea love and I especially thank you for being here, just listening, just being somebody to encourage me. Actually, one of our e &M, um members, I'm so grateful, one of our collective membership members, Bonnie and Lon Launch team extraordinaire actually gave me a piece of fall. She sent me fall because she knows I live in the eternal summer of Florida. And she's like, here's some fall in a, in a like video recording. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So I just feel the love and the encouragement 
And I hope and am trying to give it right back out to all the couples who are coming my way. And I'm so happy for the stories. Lastly, before we start this, this Marvel time, I just want to tell you the biggest piece that has been hitting me this week has been when couples are stepping from that place of just connecting and learning to grow and trust to mission together. And I got a note today from somebody saying how meaningful that stepping stone was. And I am so glad that they're off and running. So happy for you guys when you can do that. I know it's not every second. I know the shadows hit us, but let's go ahead and bring Melody on and have that Marvel conversation. And whether you're having your Halloween time now, or you've already had it and you're just enjoying some treats while you listen, I hope you have a wonderful time with us here. Hey guys, I'm so happy to have you for the pod with us. And I'm so happy to have one of my favorite teens on the show today, Melody Harden, who is one of our all-time favorite guests here on the show, actually, in terms of listens. Hi, Mel. Hey, so happy to be here. We have a couple people to give thanks to that um, my mom was on the pod for. Um, so we have the Jesus Calling podcast, Enneagram and Coffee with Sarah Jane Case, Love Thy Neighborhood with Jesse Eubanks, the Unfolding Enneagram with Danae, Ariel Curry, and Liz Morrow, Hungry Authors, The Hungry Authors Podcast, The Molly Stillman Show, The Enneagram in Love with Natalia Hernandez, and The Enneagram Marriage Launch Team. So let's talk about some special friends with our Marvel characters. We're going to just share a few details about some of the types, and we'll even share a few arguments we know going on in the Enneagram world about some of the types. But why don't you start us off with somebody you think is a type one that we've talked about with as a family um, that you feel like, and tell maybe a little bit why. Okay, so this one is very, very clear to me, but it's okay if you don't think so. Um, we think that Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, is a type one. I haven't quite decided if he's a wing nine or a wing two, but I mean, the wings aren't super important, but I'm super determined that he's a one because mm -hmm. it's very like, this is right focused. He's super body type. You can like definitely see that in all he does. And he's super loyal. And overall, he's just like, I need to be the superhero in this situation and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure everyone's okay. And I think ones are like very into that. They are so good about making sure that they are sacrificing whatever they need to for others. So I think that Steve Rogers is a definite one, but he is super fun to see on screen once you know his type because it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Yes, you have that nailed and Jack would add two wing to that, but I do see the idealist with the nine as well. So I love that you're letting us spend time noticing he has this well-rounded wing uh, system as he gets uh, more refined along the lines of the show uh, and the series. So yes, you have it nailed. It's something that reminds me a lot of your dad. So yeah, one wing too. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So tell us who I think, well, I'm going to share first so you can see if you agree. I think that um, Spider-Man, but in a particular, there's one Spider-Man that I think is a really strong two. Um, and do you agree with me on that? And if so, tell us which Spider-Man. Is it the Tom Holland Spider-Man? Yes, it is. Yes, I definitely agree with that. And that is the one that you like too, right? Well, I'm very particular about the Spider-Man. <laughs> I like Toby McGuire as the OG Peter Peter Parker. I think he's just like a classic Peter Parker. He's such a mood. He's hilarious. And then I like Andrew Garfield as Spider Man himself, just like as Spider Man. And then I like Tom Holland as like the blend between the two. Like I think he does a good job blending them. So that's my opinion. But I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> That's wonderful. And also you like Tom Holland, right? No, I'm just I actually like Andrew Garfield. More. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're in my era. This is like older Spider-Man. So that's fun, Mel. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so fun to have celeb crushes at your age. Okay. Any age. Okay. So let's move on to threes. And with the Enneagram threes, we definitely had a debate going about this one. And Melody in her gut named somebody that has had a lot of controversy around their Enneagram type. Tell us who you first thought of as a three. Well, immediately my mind went to Iron Man. Um, and there was some controversy, even just family. <laughs> 
um immediately jack was like no i think he's a seven and i was like no he's literally the achiever um but you guys will have to let us know your thoughts but i definitely think that he is a three just because everything about him to me just screams that like achiever personality just like everything about him really i think he's definitely a heart type um i think we see that I mean, he goes a lot into his mind. Like, he's definitely in that thinking area a lot of the time. But I think in the end, with his, like, love with Pepper and everything, like, he is a heart type. And, I mean, you can see that with, like, the classic phrase, like, Tony Stark has a heart. Like, that's kind of, like, his quote. Like, <laughs> I think that's enough proof that he's a heart type. But, um, I mean, technically, he doesn't really have much of a heart with the arc reactor. But I think he is. <laughs> um, and he is a really fun character. He's one of my favorites man you really did a good job arguing for him and I think that Jack is got to run for his money there but I will tell you on our Instagram when we shared uh Hannah also thought he was a three this post about it about two months ago I had so many people say he is a seven and it was very fun to hear that as a seven because I have always felt similar to him in that way. So uh, from the inside story, a lot of sevens wrote to us and said, yes. And I've often thought of my own archetype as being Iron Man, whose heart is really hard or hollowed out and then has to refine it and regrow it. And so I think that those who are inside of the seven can feel that in the way he tinkers and tries to optimize and create systems and talk really fast, but I think we might be going into his Sherlock era too, because yeah. I feel like that's even more thinking type when he's playing Sherlock uh, to Jude Law's um... Watson. Watson. Yes. Thank you. Um, what were you going to say about that? Any further commentary before we move on to four? I want to give you a chance to dissect that. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I can totally see him as a seven as well. I just think in the end, it goes back to like, one of his core struggles and for him that's ego like he can't set aside his ego for anything and I think that's not much of a struggle for sevens as much like obviously anyone can have a struggle with that but from what I know that's more of a three struggle than it is a seven so I think yeah. it goes back to that for him in determining that but I totally see them both but he's Damn. a really good no, that's a great argument. You're going right into the core issues and you're like, I see that core issue. And some of the sevens, I'm not saying no against them either because they were very passionate too. And they probably felt like he doesn't deal with the emotional pain very well. But we both really, and I love that Melody, look at her. She is in on her nine. She's like, I am going to put out there what I believe, which I love. Okay, let's talk about some fours we see in the Marvel world. I know you mentioned one or two and I can jump in also if you like. Yeah, so I think one that is might be controversial, but it probably isn't, is um, Loki. Um, we think he's a four-wing five. It could possibly be five-wing four. But overall, I think he's a four just because he, like, screams unique. And, like, he really craves that. Like, you can tell. He wants to be set apart from every other, like, Greek god in that time and every other bad guy. Like, he wants to be totally unique and special. And he really does feel like he is he is like a good uh good bad guy like I feel like he's had that three confidence like he feels like he is just totally slaying this whole operation like I think that's one of my favorite things about him is when he leans into his three wing and he really just goes for it because it's so fun to see but I mean in the Loki show you can like see him in his five side like a lot mm -hmm. doing and figuring out the mysteries and stuff but I think he's like just a really well-rounded four character Mm, yeah, you make a great case for that. And I think upon quick reflection, we might think five, but I think that when you really look at that, you see more four. And another person that's in the four and five realm is Dr. Strange, which is another person I thought of as a five. Uh, and yeah. then Jack, Jack, everyone has to know this. If you don't know, Jack is very six-ish and very argumentative. Um, and so he has to come up against you. And so he thinks he's a four. But, um, and I did take the name into account, Dr. Strange, you know, fours want to be unique and different. Um, but I also see such five of Dr. Strange. Gosh, there's a lot of, I mean, we're so nuanced. You can also see earlier Dr. Strange before he's magical and embraced his deeper magic that he has even some major achiever three vibes. Um, but do you land on four or five with him or somewhere else? Well, before this, I was originally like, oh, five for sure. But mm -hmm. now that I think about it, 
he goes into his five when he's older and then he's in his three before like the accident. So it could be that he's just a four and he leans into his five wing or his three wing. Mm. So that's how I could see Jack's point. But I mean, my original gut reaction was he's a five, but mm-hmm. I-, I get that. And body types, gut reactions mean something. So take that for what you will guys. Now a five that I had thrown out there was vision and also called Vige by the Scarlet Witch. <laughs> what do you think about that one? I think I could see that. Yeah, I could also see him as a one. I'm not super sure, certain on which one. I think five, just because he is a robot. And so it's like all thinking, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I see a lot of one in him as well, especially in WandaVision. You see like the traditional kind of vibes going on with the like 50s era. Yes. So you kind of see him lean into that traditional side. Uh, but I think the show itself is a very five show. And you see a lot of mystery and it's all very thoughtful. Um, So I think that could be between the two. It's very like heart or head as a show combo between like him and Scarlett. Mm, Ooh, I like that. How you brought triads into it. And I think that uh, she's another, like we have several other characters we're not getting to dissect in the full, but I think that that is a really good reminder. And we'll talk a little bit about her too, with possibly another type, but thank you. That's a great one reminder too. And that's why Melody and I love try type too. When you see some nuances, deeper nuances, we're so unique. Now we have uh, somebody else who I think is five-ish, but it has a different type um, that we're going to talk about with a subtype later as I think Bucky can be seen as five-ish later. Um, would you agree? I actually thought of him as a nine I saw a lot of things about him being a nine actually a nine wing eight which is so funny how I'm a nine wing eight but I did see a lot of things about him being a nine because just because of like his character in general like Mm -hmm. he starts off very like unassuming but then he just brings this random like power throughout like his (laughs) series and you're like whoa (laughs) very asleep throughout the series like just in general throughout all the movies Mm -hmm. like Mm-hmm. whenever he takes him down like he loses his arm or whatever he is like shut down and he has to be like woken back up by his friends and family and then once he's awake he's like a powerhouse like literally a battle. but I think that's why I thought yeah. of him as a it's just because he goes to sleep so often like just in his mind you know and he really has to have people help lift him up and like awaken to be like his full potential Mm, yeah. And I really didn't think he is a five, but I thought he comes across on a basic level as a five. So I like how you gave us some depth because I was even going to not type him as a nine. I was going to type him as a self pres eight. Oh. And I like how you reminded me of all of that with the sleeping. And I love that. I feel like you are spot on. Um, but I think he could have appeared to some as five-ish when I first was like just going through them all. Um, okay. So I feel like we've got some five vibes. I wanted to make sure we had some five vibes. Um, what about six? Did you have anybody that you thought of as a strong six? There was a couple contenders that we talked about and I'll share if you don't want to. This one is harder for me to think of. I had a harder time typing sixes for some reason. I think they're it's harder to type in general. I think it's because also the counterphobic side, like that almost feels like a whole different type. So there's like a lot you can do with it. Mm-hmm. One of our options was Black Widow as a six. And I don't know if I am set on it. I have to hear your opinion. But she was definitely one of our contenders just because she's such a loyal character like to the end like loyalty is like her main thing um and she also has that counterphobic side that she brings into her different dynamics with all the different characters but um I think she's just a really like well-rounded six if she is one um however I want to hear your opinion because I'm not set on her being a six Mm, well I really like that and I love how you hallmark her loyalty and uh desire for diplomacy amongst the group she really does share that and has sadness and all of the the traits of a very caring, loyal person when she's seeing the team really fall apart in civil war. Um, I would say that, you know, on my first glance, I would have almost thought sexual two or sexual eight. Um, but when I really look at the depths, I see the CP six quite a bit. And I know she gets 
called this a lot in culture as a person anyway, Scarlett Johansson. Um, but I think that definitely, and for those who don't know, CP6 is the sexual six. So definitely the sexual uh, subtype, the dominance, you know, uh, the reason I thought of the sexual too was like the la femme Nikita or the femme fatale. Um, but I think that ultimately, even though she does have a heart of love and really and truly, I think that she lands herself in with such strong, heroic spaces that I do feel that she's also very possibly the sexual eight. And so that one sticks with me a little bit as well because of the body type to her instincts. Um, and so I think she thinks a lot though. And I think I'm going to land where you land actually ultimately because she doesn't just say like, this is right, this is wrong, the same way Captain America does, the same way body types do. She yeah. sits with things. She grapples with things in a way like you hear us doing, because I'm a thinking type. So I like to grapple. I like to wait. I like to hold off until I make my final assessment and chew on it for a while. And I feel like she does that too. So I think that you did a good job on that. Yeah, no, definitely. Maybe we discovered that her tri-type was 268 mm. or 6 Bravo, but um, I definitely see those two for her. The yeah. eight and two, they're very strong. Yeah, that's a good point, Mel. Um, okay, well, let's talk about a seven. We have a couple of these that we thought of, and we're not going to review. We already know we're thinking about Iron Man as a possible seven, but uh, anybody else that you thought fit the seven would be great to talk about. I thought of Ant Man as a definite, mm -hmm. and we also discussed. Thor being a seven wing eight, if I remember correctly. Um, I think that he, that Thor himself is, he's a very like not messing with emotions person. Like I think throughout all of his movies, we see him kind of deflect emotion with um, humor. And or gluttony. With sequence. And then he has gluttony in um, one of the later movies. So I think it's cool to see him um, go through all of those classic step, seven stances but then we also see him as a healthy seven, bringing an enthusiasm to the group. And he's always up for an adventure. And he also just carries a lot of those classic seven personality traits. So I think of him as a clear seven wing eight because he has that eight power and drive that he brings. Um, but then Ant-Man, I think more of as a seven wing six, just because he is such a funny guy. He's hilarious. And he really is an enthusiast. He's always down for something new. And I think his six wing comes in because he worries. Like even when it was a civil war and he's like, why are you guys taking me to fight? He's like, am I going to be okay? Is my daughter okay? Why am I on house arrest? Like what's going on? Like he has to know. And I think that's a classic six trick. So I could almost see yeah, six. Yeah, I know. It's very close, but I just say seven just because like at the core, he also deflects emotion and he, I haven't seen him do a ton of gluttony. That's what's hard. But I also haven't seen him like spiral in anxiety. So like I'm trying to think of the core issues of both types, you know, and I'm not sure which one he has, but you can see if you have a different perspective on that. Yeah, no, I think you've done a great job with that. And I think that he's a complex character. And I do feel like all of this is just in fun because none of us are inside of the heart of these big characters. So I think you did awesome on that one. Um, and I also think that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, has a few characters we haven't talked about too. Any sevens in that one that you can think of? Yeah, I think Star Starlord's probably a seven. Um, Chris yeah. Pratt. Yeah. yeah, or a two. I think he's super fun, like a two and loving, but also I see a lot of seven. Uh, I could see that. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying I could see that too as well. Both yes. of them. Yes. Okay. Tell me if you have any eights that you have on your radar um, in terms of your uh, Enneagram typing. Okay, this one's harder. I don't know. I'm going to throw out a random one that we didn't discuss that just came to my mind. But um, the Falcon, or I guess That's... he's not. Uh, I think he's like the quintessential eight in like Marvel movies. Yes, that's the same one I was thinking. And I'm so glad you, yes. That's so funny. And I was confusing him and Hawkeye for a minute, but Hawkeye might even go back to five for a second. Hawkeye might be a five. And um, cause I get the names confused, not the characters. Um, But I love that you brought us back to eight for uh him because, and what's his name again? Falcon. Okay. I love that you brought us back to eight for Falcon because 
I don't see any argument there. He's an eight and he does a great job of being the new Captain America. I enjoyed his series. Yeah, I think in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you can kind of see the eight nine dynamic. That mm -hmm. was pretty clear. So, um, they were like both like big body types in that, and they were acting purely on gut reaction, which was funny. But um, it was funny to see them <laughs> their nine wing and their eight wing, um, and kind of come together. But I think he's definitely an eight. Um, throughout all of the movies. What do you see in terms of the nine eight interaction between he and Bucky? Because I know you've heard this, but eight nine is a very common marriage pairing. So what do you see as the eight nine dynamic? Because I think you're closer to it as a nine and you have a lot of eight friends. So what does that look like on the show or in real life? Um, I think in the show, Bucky kind of lets what's his name? I think it's Sam. I think yeah, I think yeah. Sam is a Bucky kind of lets Sam take the lead um in a lot of their operations just with like on the day-to-day -day kind of thing, like he's kind of more go with the flow. And he wasn't super particular, like, oh, I need the shield. Like, I want that to be passed down to me. Like, I don't think he cared as much about that. And I think Sam likes to take charge a little more and have that like powerful position. But I also think they worked well together because when Bucky stood up for what he wanted, like when he let his voice be heard, like Sam was very responsive to that. And like, there was an immediate like thought between that you know like it wasn't just like a oh well maybe you think that like it was like a wow you think that let's go through this and we'll figure it out so I think that's something I see a lot in my relationships is with eights um is I tend to be a little more go with the flow and chill and like laid back kind of like let them do it um but I also have fun with them obviously but it's just like I'm not super high in decision making when I'm around my eight friends um which is honestly a relief because I don't love decision making that much <laughs> Yeah, that might be why people love the pairing. But then when it's really important, I've seen you stand up in your own way. Sometimes that's in a withdrawing way where you're like, I'm not going to engage this. And sometimes I've seen you stand up with your voice. And I'm sure you're still always and all the nines listening probably navigate that all the time. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Well, thank you, Mel. This was so fun with the eights. Let's move on to our nine. We've kind of given it away quite a lot, um, but I still want to talk a little bit through nine because Bucky, we think, is a strong nine. And again, I thought first self-pres eight, very stoic either way, but I think you made a great case for him being a nine. Do you want to add anything to that? No, I think I think he's just really a well-rounded nine like he leans into his one wing a lot but I think I mean I guess I say he's well-rounded but he really is in that eight wing but I mean we do see him lean into his one when it comes to thought processes in like the battles and everything um I do think there are some other nine characters <laughs> yes I mean, we talked about it, so sorry um, sorry no no you're good there's so many other characters in the show so it's kind of hard to like place one but overall I think there's a lot of body types in like the series in general there's also a lot of thought like thinking types in the show because we have all the thought that goes into all of these missions so I think what we've learned from this is that there's a lot of thinking types and body types and that really makes our heart types in this the series very special mm -hmm. to see those types come in and bring a little love to that Hmm, that's a beautiful way to cap it off. And I don't want to forget one nine before we do that you mentioned, and that was the Hulk. Yes, the Hulk. Yes, I think Bruce Banner, especially because it's like, it's almost like he's in his nine as Bruce, and then like he turns into an eight in the Hulk, kind of like that. Um, I also see him with a lot of five, but I think overall he's a nine. Mm -hmm. I really like the five part of him. And I think that he might be a five, nine um, or yeah, five, nine. And then his try, he might be a five, nine, two, um, possibly four. Um, what yeah. would you say about the two or the four? I mean, I want to say four with how like he kind of goes into his more artistic side, but I think it might be two just because he's a little more of a people pleaser. He's not very he doesn't do much self-sabotage or anything like that. Like, it's not, I don't know how to put that, but I feel like he's very others focused and it almost ruins him a little. Like he gives a little too much throughout the series, you know, where he gives a lot to like Nat and then she can't give a lot back and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. where we really see his two come in. Um, 
I could also see so much four though. It's kind of hard to place, but I think mm-hmm. he's overall the nine five two. Agreed. And that one is um seen with that, like you said, the two is also he's a doctor and I see so much helping. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. So yeah, I am so glad we had this conversation about the Enneagram. Marvel, which teens and Marvel go so well together. And for those of us with um, a young at heart spirit, and also thank you for all your help on the book launch. You've been amazing, Mel. Of course. Yeah, it was so fun. It was such an honor to help out. Oh, thank you so much to Melody, to everybody that Melody thanks. Thank you so much for you just being here with us so that we could enjoy a more relaxed time together and pace and place. And I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you've actually been able to see yourself in one of these characters and that you can take one thing from today, even if it's just literally lightness and joy or a silly moment where you're like, I'm going to write them back and tell them what I think of this character. We just want to bring you that joy and lightness this week. And we'll come back for the depths more. You can find them in my book anytime. Make sure you use your baker code EMBOOK40 for 40% off, as well as free U.S. standard shipping or Amazon, Audible, Kindle. It's everywhere. So thank you guys so much for being with me today. Have a great one. Bye-bye.